So here he is out of the blue corner, the number one heavyweight contender fighting for the title here tonight. Daniel Cormier has eight championship belts at home. Do you remember, though, the nerves for your first UFC title fight? It's the most overwhelming thing you've ever <laughs> felt in your entire life. You are sitting in the back waiting for that moment where you get an opportunity to go chase something greater than yourself. So many people have played a part in getting this man to this spot. How does he deliver? How does he not let anyone down? How does he ultimately become the champion of the world? This is a big spot for him. He is so excited to try and become the man. Well, self-belief is a powerful thing. He has long thought that he is the best heavyweight in the world. Tonight, he gets a chance to prove it. So here he is, one of the best featherweights in the world, fighting out of Spain, Ilya Topuria. It's amazing to have this type of wisdom and maturity and sophistication at 26 years of age. And that sophistication really bleeds into his fighting style. If you reference the Ryan Hall fight, that is as tricky a stylistic challenge as there is in the featherweight division. And he stayed measured the entire time before getting that knockout in round one. He has taken his game to that requisite next level ever since, making himself impossible to deny a world title fight. Well, there has already been a lot of UFC history here at Toyota Center in Houston, Texas. More where that came from tonight, and we are ready to go with two of the best athletes in the sport. Our tail of the tape for this heavyweight championship fight. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger here. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Elia El Matador. So Herb Dean, third man in there for this one. Ready. Good to have you with us tonight. Of course, we are inside Toyota Center in Houston, Texas, USA. And every time I walk through these walls, I can't help but think about Gilbert Melendez and Diego Sanchez going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Back at UFC 166, remember Rogan? Oh, my God! It was the craziest fight. You could not believe what you were watching. Because you guys said, this is the night that we make history. We're going to stand on a quarter in the middle of the octagon and let it fly. And that they did. Houston, the Toyota Center has been home to some of the greatest fights in UFC history. Edge of your seat action as expected so far. All right, he's in a half guard position here, DC, and in a good spot to dole out a lot of damage, I would think. A lot of damage can be done from the half guard. You sit back on that leg, you press down into your opponent, you drop elbows, you drop punches. What is very key is you controlling the underhook on the far side. If you give up that underhook, your opponent can use the half guard to build up to an elbow, sweep, or just chase down a single leg. to give him more of an advantage on the map. Right into side control. 
Man, isn't it fun to watch this dude work on the mat? He's unbelievable how fluid he is in his motions on the mat. All right, half guard position here, DC. You have an extra pop in your step when you talk about fighters working out of this half. Oh, man. I like half guard as a top fighter. I understand half guard as a bottom fighter. Don't want to be there. It's right. very dangerous. But if you are there, you have to be winning the position of the underhook. It opens up so many opportunities for you to either escape or sweep. Under three minutes to go in round one. Oh. Moving his head on the ground here, avoiding a lot of these big shots. Just gotta be careful here. Ooh, right into side control, DC. This is where you want to be now because you get to make your opponent decide. They try to turn back into you, you can attack guillotine. If they turn away to try to get to your knees, you throw your hooks in and you got all your rear choke submissions. Now drops inside that closed guard, DC. Full guard. Let's see how patient he is as he attacks a submission or big ground and pound. Nice transition. Just over two minutes now to go. All right, so yet another ground and pound strike lands right there, DC. He's getting very active now that he knows he can land these strikes. Got to be careful here. Lands the ground and pound strike. Another ground and pound strike lands. There it is. Now he's going to mount. Topuria getting absolutely worked from the top here on the wrong end of nearly all of these ground and pound strikes. All right, close guard now. You gotta be careful though, he's got a lot of submissions off his back. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. Man, he's killing it on the ground, another strike gets through. All right, working inside his opponent's guard here. You cannot sit in the jiu-jitsu guy's guard. And you can't have one arm in, one arm out. Guys will start throwing up legs, chasing triangle. He passed the half guard. Oh, big shots from the top. These ground strikes are starting to add up. Working in half guard here, making these shots count. Oh, more attack, yup. Oh, looks like he's got that submission locked in. Starting to get deep. Wow, somehow, some way he gets the arm out. It looked like he was done, John, but he was able to stay comfortable, stay patient, and now he finds himself safe. Strong reversal there. All right, half guard now. Not a fighter you want in half guard against you for the bottom fighter What he needs to do. He needs to secure his underhook. He's got to be fighting, fighting, fighting for underhook. One of the most key things you can do as a bottom fighter stuck in half guard is try to frame. You frame and push your opponent away from you. By pushing him away from you, he will then want to come back into you. Right. It's like when I push you back, you want to go forward. So as he comes forward, hand goes off the face, let it slip into an underhook, build up to your elbow, then go chase your single leg. This is high-level grappling, John, from a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt named Daniel Cormier. Woo! <laughs> All right, a lot of highlights from which to choose over those previous five minutes, DC. A lot of good work on the ground. You knew, John, going into the fight, that if he was able to get this fight to the floor, he would have the most success, and you saw it in that exchange. He was able to get posture, land some really good ground and pound as the round came to an end. You ready to fight? Ready. Here we are, early round two. All right, DC, here we go with our next round. And how about the ground and pound skills in the previous round? His opponent better make some adjustments or mom's not going to recognize him. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. He's got no action to change this because the, this guy on top is so good with his pressure. He's not even controlling your body with his hand. And that's the detail that everybody's missing. He's sitting in the half bar. Oh, guillotine, guillotine here. Oh, that gilly is tight. Oh, what a beautiful, seamless transition. The side mount as he counters the gilly. Oh, somehow, some way he got out. These guys are 
back and forth in submission defense wins this transition. All right, so he just decides to get up here and let the opponent up. Starting to do some really significant damage to the body here. Another strike lands there. Nasty body kick downstairs. Side control now. All right, right into side control. Upper body strength figures to be put to good use here. Yes, absolutely. And you got to look for his opponent to turn back into him. He should chase guillotine, but the opponent turns to the opposite side. He can take his back, throw his hooks in, try to choke, or flatten him out and just go for the finish. All right, he's got him in the north-south position now, DC. We'll see if the crowd can be mature about this. Yes, they have to be mature about this. The fact that this is a real fighting position fight and the down. guy on top has a lot of opportunities to finish. If he's going to attack this north-south choke, he's got to drive that shoulder deep into his neck, really start to sink his weight away, which will in turn cut the oxygen from his opponent, allowing him to get the finish. Three minutes now to go in round two. You can't take all those unanswered strikes. They don't have to be that damaging. Yeah. You just gotta move. Keep moving those hips until you get your guard back. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Really good job to land these strikes from top position. Man, another one lands. He's trying to pound his opponent's head through the canvas. So Pody is in half guard now. Right inside his opponent's guard here, DC. You don't want to play around here too long. No, you got to either have two hands in or two hands out. Our guys start to attack triangles. All right, good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's going to be. Great job landing from the top position. Oh, nice job to split his guard and get the ground strike home again. He's got to be careful here. Posture's up now and lands a vicious head strike. Great submission defense. Nice shots landing from the top position. Another one. I mean, he cannot miss from the top position. All right, so that opened up a cut around his eye area. He hasn't moved his head well. He was taking shots too clean, and now a cut has opened up. The ground strikes continue to pile up. Under a minute to go. Ground and pound the hammer. Mark Coleman would be proud. Oh, his ground and pound is on full display here tonight. Oh, good movement to avoid that strike from the top. Nice positional control here. Moving his head here on the ground, Shane. I mean, this guy is very active off of his back. That helps him to evade those strikes. All right, he continues to bully his opponent here, really manhandling him on the ground. Oh, good ground and pound here. Good movement on the ground here defensively by Ilya Topuria. All right, that's the end of round number two. All right, that's the end of the round as we show you some of the highlights over those five minutes. Really a clinic when it comes to the ground and pound. Yeah, man, this is what you're taught. When you're learning to become a ground and pound fighter, you want to do it exactly like he did. Gain posture, have height, control hands and wrists, land strikes, don't throw too many, throw just enough control, throw again, control. He did it perfectly.
Ready. Good. Round three of a possible five. And how good is his right hook count? Pretty good position here with the single collar in the clinch. Topuria's nose is bleeding now. Yes, looks as though he got cut by one of those offerings from his opponent. Great timing on that double leg. Get the moan here. Ground and pound strike there now. And look at him attacking the arm triangle on the other side. He's gonna lock him down, try to pass all the way across his body. Once he gets across, he will start to drop his chest. Yeah, Page and Alexio Lennox. Somehow he got out though. Great job clearing the hips, facing and getting out of that Ezekiel took attempt. Well, we may have the best cut men and women in the business, but I'm not sure they're gonna be able to do much with that cut. It continues to widen with every passing stroke. And you're fighting a great fighter. It's hard to deal with the damage of the cut while dealing with the level of the fighter in front of you. Right now, you've got to do something different to try and change the way that this fight is playing out. He's doing a really good job putting himself in position. Oh, you got to love the ground and pound strikes here. Topodia's eyes starting to swell now. Another ground and pound strike lands. Nice combination of strikes here from the top, standing over his opponent. It's not unlike Muhammad Ali over Sonny Liston. Oh, that is a good reference. If you're standing and your opponent's on the ground, you're doing really good work. Great ground and pound by this man. Oh, and there's another ground strike for good measure. Side control now, and certainly I would think more offensive options for the bottom fighter than in the half guard. Absolutely more offensive options because now you can just start to get away. You can just go to a wrestler stand up, get to your knees, post your hands, don't allow him to get his hooks in, right? Really be aware of the hooks. But get to your hands, stand up, fight the hands, break away and escape. But it's so much more free flowing than the half guard in the side control. Because all you need to do is just get the opponent's body up because his legs are just free to move. His legs are not controlling anything. His legs are just free, so you have more freedom to use yours. Nice. Can't get it. Good awareness by the defensive fighter. Topodi is looking to pass out of the half guard here, maybe looking for side control. He's denied. Under two minutes now to go. He needs to better move. move. Yeah, he's got to move, John. He's got to shrimp and try to either get up or pull his opponent back into him so he doesn't have the posture to land that big damage. Work, 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 work. Yes, yeah, smart adjustment, yep. Working out of the half guard here. Well, he's in a compromising spot here, DC. You got to figure out a way to get back to your feet. He needs to shove the knee. Hip heights and get Watch back up. up to your feet. Oh, almost like he saw the skin swell right away after he landed that strike. So that trainer's gonna have to bring in the in swell to try to deal with the swelling because this guy is getting pieced up. Topodia getting peppered here from the top. He's got to figure out a way to cover up. Once he got him cut, he recognized where he needs to be throwing these shots. And once again, he lands right on that cut. Outstanding ground and pound here. Somewhat of a lost art in MMA, at least in terms of making sure that every strike counts. Not an issue for him. He's making every single one of them count. He is not pity pad. He's not touching. Every punch that lands, he wants you to feel it. Oh, he is a bloody mess as another strike gets through right on that cut. Fifteen seconds. Win the scramble! Win the scramble! Lands with the ground and pass. Stop, stop. 
up. Oh. Right, three rounds down, potentially two more to go. We are headed to the championship rounds. All right, back to the stools now, and he is no longer the handsome man we once knew. That gash is getting serious. All right, well, no surprise to see that eye continue to be targeted. Some replays from the previous round in which a lot of damage was doled out. Well, the cut man's got some work to do to try to give this kid an opportunity to stay in the fight because the reality is he has taken far too many shots to the eye, and now he's dealing with a nasty cut. He has got to change something. You ready to fight? Ready. Go All right, on. here's round four. Fight scheduled for five, five minute rounds. All right, here we go. The tension. Oh! Takedown defense holds up. Now he gets a more dominant position with the underhook. He is going to start to drive these over and over. You got to be careful here. You got to move. Drives the shin into the rib. Great body kick. He gets to the single cup. Oh, he's stuck in the guillotine. He's up. What's the defense on this play? Trying for a submission here. Oh, I'm no expert, but that Von Flute choke looks locked in. you got to be kidding me, he's out. Well, this UFC fight is sort of dissolving into a horror movie. I don't need to see any more damage inflicted. You don't have to lose everything on one night. His corner can stop the fight now, and he would be mad now, but he would appreciate them later because it will extend his career going down the line. Got to watch his neck. Oh, nice guillotine there. Looking for the guillotine lock right now, and it looks like it's it. He's done a great job of securing it, but now he's got to settle if he wants to finish the fight. Oh, look at this. Jumps over in the side mount to try to counter the guillotine, and he's out again. Oh, nice. Well, he grounded him, and now he's trying to pound him out. Great ground strikes here. Another strike gets through from the top position. He's got to start throwing down. Oh, big ground strikes continue to land. In the half guard. Now inside the closed guard. And he's going to try to find ways to pass and move to a submission. Really doing a nice job getting these shots home on the ground. Oh, he's got a QT here. Looks like a pretty good attempt here. Oh, he escapes. He got out. I mean, wow. That is great submission defense. Well, some might describe this as critical condition. That eye is absolutely mangled. I wouldn't be surprised to see us get a stoppage here soon. Yeah, I mean, John, you look at his face. He's been beaten up for a very long time. I could see the doctor coming into the ring, looking at the cut and saying, I've seen enough. Ooh, arm triangles in tight. It's getting in very tight. Very smart there. You never favor submission Break over up. a dominant position. Leon Belly, big strikes landing here. Man, this is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing damage. Oh, yeah. No pity pat to this guy. This guy's trying to land, and he's trying to land effective strikes. Beautiful ground strikes landed. This is where he wants to move. Under two minutes to go. Again, not much defense there. Another ground strike gets through. Well, he's got his back now. The doctor may have to take a look at this. He's getting hit on that swollen area over and over again, and it seems critical now. Well, he's going to enjoy watching this one back. Let's take a look at the replay of the knockout just a moment ago. It was right hand after right hand after right hand. Finally, he found the one that hit the exact sweet spot that ended his opponent's night. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at 3 minutes, 16 seconds of round number 4. Declaring the winner by knockout and new undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Big.
right, so we got a new UFC heavyweight champion, and potentially a star is born tonight, DC. He is the type of guy that makes people want to tune in. He is the type of guy that you know excitement will happen when you watch him. And tonight he becomes a star in a massive draw for the UFC.